Welcome back to Podiatry Marketing. I'm your host, Jim McDonald. Joined as always by my trusty co-host, Tyson Franklin. Tyson, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic today. Big Jim, how are you doing? Ah, uh, doing well, doing well, kind of muddling through this cold, uh, dark winter here in Canada. But uh, what do you expect when you, uh, when you live up here? So no, yeah, no complaints, uh, just uh, yeah, trying to get through the winter. What's your favorite season? I would say fall. Like, uh, I like the okay. cool nights, but the days are, you know, the, the leaves are changing colors. It's not too hot, not too humid. Uh, yeah, really beautiful scenery up here in the Northeast in, in the Montreal area. So, yeah, I have been in around Vancouver, Power River in October when it's getting a little bit cooler. And I must admit, the just the change in the color of trees and all that is just amazing, which you don't get in Cairns. In Cairns, everything's green. <laughs> <laughs> in summer and in winter it's green and everything's green nothing changes yeah it's just always green that's what happens. okay well, let's get on to today's topic yeah so we're gonna jump is, into it is piggybacking onto other communities mm -hmm. now a lot of people i think everyone's piggybacked once or <laughs> twice before in their life but i was recently reading this book it's this book here called the culting of brands that uh, a friend gave me dr jesse green and he gave it to me about a year ago and it's been sitting there and I hadn't, hadn't read it yet. So I thought this year I'm going to just, I've set this goal. I'm just going to read a ton of books this year. I just want to get through a lot more books. When I was reading this book, it mentioned something that I thought was really interesting when they were talking about cults. I'm not, I don't want, I'm not telling you when to start a cult, but what they were talking about is how, uh, like Christianity, for example, when it first started, it was a cult. That's, that's how it was sort of viewed. So Christianity basically piggybacked off of uh, Judaism. And then later on, the Mormons piggybacked off of Christianity. So, and it was funny, as you're reading through it, they're talking about the, the Mormons originally, when they first started, were classed as a cult when they first kicked off. But then as it grew, it became mainstream. So what they're saying is just this whole piggybacking principle has been there for thousands of years. And it's something that we can actually do in podiatry. And I've mentioned it to a lot of my coaching clients in the past that piggybacking is just a fantastic marketing strategy. And give an example, like Nike, for example, Nike couldn't piggyback off of Adidas because they're like competing brands. So because Nike couldn't do that, they then piggybacked off of running communities. And we were talking about that off air, how they, they turned up at running meets and they had shoes in the back of their cars and they were just, they were seen and heard without really just screaming at everybody, hey, you must wear a Nike shoe. They were just, they were there. And because they were there, it would start conversations. So they didn't so much market the Nike shoe. They just, uh, they piggybacked off of communities that already existed. And like I said, we can do the same thing in podiatry. I think it's a pretty cool topic. I think there's a lot of ways that you can provide value to a specific community, learn from other communities, you know, share different things and just kind of be, uh, either a, you know, a valuable resource or, you know, providing some value to community will not only ingratiate you, but yeah, it just helps, uh, you know, build relationships. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited to jump into some of these specific examples with you today. Well, another example I mentioned, uh, before I press record, when I mentioned the company Solomon and I, I've, I've heard the company, but I don't really know the company. And you said, oh yeah, they're a ski company. <laughs> so straight away, you knew they were a ski company. And they said when they tried to get into the snowboarding market, they couldn't do it because snowboarders looked at Solomon as there was, this, there was a company that produced skis for old farts. <laughs> so they reckon if they just made a snowboard and, said, and tried to compete against the people who were already big in the snowboarding uh, sort of industry, they would have just been laughed at. So what they did, they piggybacked off of other communities. So there were groups that would meet at snowboard parks. So they would turn up, they'd have their equipment there, they'd have a few people riding it, but then they'd have all their boards there and say, hey, just take one for a ride, test it out, practice it. We're not trying to sell any here, we just want you to use them. And the more communities that they sort of got themselves into and let people test and try their product, and, and they could see the quality of it, then all of a sudden their company grew and became quite big in the whole snowboarding industry. Yeah, it really help, help, sounds like they kind of helped give them some exposure for their brand, right? They weren't. They weren't trying to do the hard sell. They weren't trying to push people to do something. They just made their products available. And if people happen to like them, 
uh, you know, it could kind of facilitate some word of mouth and some some goodwill by, you know, this kind of renting mm. out or letting them trial those snore boats. So I think that's a uh, pretty interesting, uh, you know, way to think about it. It's almost like a try before you buy. I, I have purchased s certain spirits. I've seen it on the shelf and I'm going, oh, okay, I don't know what that is. But then all of a sudden they may have a rep that's in one of the larger uh, like bottle shops. And they're doing tasting and you try and go, oh, that's actually really nice. You may not buy it that time, but then later on, you see it again. You might try it and you go, okay, now I'm going to buy a bottle. So it's it's just that exposure without them saying, hey, you must buy this bottle. Wouldn't have mattered how much they screamed at me about buying it. I probably wouldn't buy it unless I probably saw it you know, probably 50, 100 times before it would actually really start to sink in. So with podiatrists, I think there's simple things that they can do. No, I think that there's makes a lot of running. Sorry, no, what was that? I was just going to jump in and say, like, when you kind of facilitate that positive experience, that's worth more money than, you know, like some some type of advertisement, like you said, like when you actually get to try the thing and you kind of make it a make people feel special by having that sample, then, then they're more yeah. willing to down the future, like you talked about, then, oh, I've I've had a little bit of that and I had a good experience with it. So you're more likely to take action than as opposed to like, well, I saw a magazine ad with that on that one time and. You know, it's it's uh, definitely is much more. It's a different level of emotion and connection with people. Yeah, and especially if it's something new that is going to compete against something you're already using. So, like, say rum, for example, Bundaberg rums a rum that I, I like to drink. It's an Australian rum, and is it the best rum in the world? No, but I, I still enjoy it. But we were at, we were at a, a local bottle shop, uh, Dan Murphy's. I call it Uncle Dan's, and. While we were there, there was a young guy who had produced his own rum. And he was actually in the store. And we were, I was walking past with my wife. And you could see the whole rum bottle. It was really designed. It was targeting women to try actually drinking rum. Because rum's not usually a drink that women would try. But he's got pink labels. It was really targeted that way. And as we walked past, my wife stopped and went and started talking to the guy because of this pink, this pink label. And he said, oh, this is a new rum. Would you like to try it? We both tried it. We both went. Well, that is actually really, really nice. But without that sample, I never, you know, under any circumstance, would have even considered buying a bottle of that rum. Makes sense. So, so with podiatrists, for example, there's uh, like running and walking groups. There's a lot of them around. Now, you can do two different things. You can uh, participate live. So you can actually turn up at the running group or at the walking community and be involved and just be there. You're not, you don't necessarily have to have a podiatry shirt on that has a big arrow saying, look at me, I'm a podiatrist, ask, yeah, ask for help. You're just there. And by talking to people, someone's going to say, oh, by the way, what do you do? I'm a podiatrist. So that's, that's if you were doing it live. But just being involved on their, in their online groups and forums, you know, joining the groups, letting them, you know, when you're seeing certain posts, making a comment but not yelling out, hey, I'm a podiatrist, just giving really quality information over and over again eventually people will see that and start taking note do exactly the same thing with personal trainers on some of their forums and pages online groups and i know a lot of personal trainers that actually have running groups off you know, like it's like a group they run off of the personal training business and through that once you're in some of those groups and you're you're talking to them when they know who you are they will start to approach you and this is how I used to get a lot of speaking engagements with personal trainers. And next thing you have 20, 25 runners sitting there listening to you talking about podiatry. But I didn't do it by just blurting that I'm a podiatrist. You can do the same thing with gyms. Uh, any, any business where you think your community could be, you can actually be involved in those groups. No, I think that's a great point. It's, it is that, you know, uh, getting in there, providing value, not being a pain in the ass. I think everyone's had experiences <laughs> With some, yeah. with some that either joins up or jumps in and is like super self-promotional and kind of over the top, you know, trying to be kind of the smarty pants in the group or trying to sell people on something and it really comes off as really negative. So if you can have, you know, be authentically interested, you know, if you like to go to, to walk or to run or be a part of a gym and just kind of ingratiate yourself and become a part of the community and then provide that value or that, that kind of help that people need within the community. That's how, that's how you build long-term relationships and that's how you, you win and your clinic wins long-term. Yeah, well, even with the Podiatry Business Owners Club, the group I have on Facebook, with that group there, I, to be in the group, you've got to be a podiatrist or you've got to be a really, really close friend of mine that I, I think has a skill set 
that will be beneficial. And I'll get somebody who will join and I'll go and look at their profile and I'll go, I know they're all, they also do something else. But the rules are they're a podiatrist and I can't just exclude you because I, yeah, I don't want to look like I'm feeling threatened by anybody. So I let them in the group. Oh my God, I tell you, some of them, as soon as you let them in the group, they just start pouring. Everything that they do, they're now trying to sell it to that community. And as soon as I see it, I just boot them straight out of the group. I don't even, I don't even give them a warning because I know if that's what they're going to do right from the start, they don't understand what the group or what a community is actually all about. So a couple of points I've got down here. A community is not something that should be invaded. You don't, uh, you don't join a group and then all of a sudden just start attacking it or invade everybody in that, in that group and start pushing things out to people. Even like the Podiatry Business Owners Club had somebody who joined and then I had somebody else who was in there send me a message and go, do you know this person? They've just started direct messaging me uh, their, their information. I went, oh, thanks for letting me know. Boom, you're gone. But so many people do it. It's it's just something you've got to not do. Don't invade the group. And I think it's you make a good point as far as the moderation of a group, right? If you do have a group uh, where it's a close, you know, trusted group of individuals that are trying to provide value to each other, maybe answer each other's questions, provide resources in a helpful helpful manner, um, it's one of those things where if someone violates that, you know, it's 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 pretty clear. And uh, I think there's a lot of groups right now, especially on Facebook in the podiatry community, where it just people blasting self-promotional things that really have nothing to do with providing value or helping other people. So um, you're right to, and I wish other groups like, you know, moderated as well as you do yours, because that's, it, it, once you let a lot of that stuff kind of start seeping into a group, it kind of destroys the morale or the trust within a group and just kind of a, a group or a community will kind of tank after a period of time, just because no one's kind of minding the store and people are just you know, joining and, and blasting other people. And that, that's not really what community is all about. Yeah. And I, I have been part of some of those groups where you join it and every post that's coming through just one after be 10 posts a day. And it's all the different people in the groups that are just flogging, constantly flogging their, their own stuff. And that's a positive feedback I've had with the group. If somebody said to me, they like it, that it's actually a really safe group. They never feel like anyone's, you know, if they've got a question, they can ask it. They never feel intimidated, but and, and the thing, I think the main part with any group that you're trying to piggyback off of is remember the group is more important than you and it's more important than your business. It's the group that's important. Yeah. So you want to constantly just be adding value to that group. If somebody posts something, post a positive comment and try to add value without ever saying that, hey, look at me, I'm a podiatrist. And I think a huge part of that is reputation. You know, I think we... yeah. You know, we got used to doing things in person so much that, uh, you know, people that are self-conscious or people that are aware that, you know, your, your livelihood is based upon how good your reputation is. It's easy to kind of have that barometer maybe when you're in real life, but some people just, for whatever reason, they don't, they don't treat the online world in the same fashion or the same kind of caution that, you know, if you, if you are crazily self-promoting and blasting people all the time, people are going to lose respect for you and lose trust in what you have to say if you're always trying to sell your product or sell your event. So, you know, in the, in the kind of internet age we live in now, your personal reputation can really be ruined online unless you're really careful about how you, you know, craft what you say and how you interact with people in a, in a helpful and genuine way. People can smell that stuff a mile away now. You know, the internet has been around for 15 or 20 years and you think that, you know, it's not the wild, wild west anymore. You have to do things that are building trust and maintaining your reputation at the utmost and uh, being a, a valuable member of that community and you know, being trustworthy is a huge part of that. Yeah. And once you become a trusted member of that community and people will know who you are, if somebody like I've been part of groups where someone will post a comment and I go, that was a really, really good comment straight away. My first inclination is I want to know who this person is. So that I then go and click on their name, see where they are. And then I hope that if they do have a business that they may mention their night, their, their business within their, their own profile. So then I can go and have a look at that. And if I keep seeing really positive information from them, I'm like, well, this person can be trusted because they're offering value without actually trying to sell me anything. And they're letting me come to them. 
So it's sort of like, you know, well, they say you attract, uh, attract more bees. They say you attract more bees with honey, not salt. Is that the saying? Yeah, or vinegar sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. Are bees actually attracted by honey? I mean, they make honey, so I guess they would be attracted to it. So. I don't know. Bears would be. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's true either. It always, Winnie the Pooh was just crazy about uh, honey. Do you know who Winnie the Pooh is? Of course. I know who Winnie the Pooh Christopher Robin, uh, Eeyore. Okay, just check it. Tigger. Just checking because, yeah. yeah just, just every now and then I'll say something to you that I assume you know, <laughs> and then you just give me this really blank look. And I'm like, okay, that's right. Yeah, you're on the other part of the country. That's usually the other part of the world. It's usually like rugby, Australian rules, football. Uh, mythical, like folk heroes, uh, those, those kind of places, I don't know, any kind of, uh, sometimes I guess TV shows I may not know, you know, if you throw out the, like the obscure Margot Robbie, you know, Robbie t-shirt, uh, TV show, I wouldn't know it, but, uh, but yeah. No, that's okay. Jeez, we get off track. Anyway, the uh, <laughs> last part I just want to sort of talk about is if you, well, one is always be humble. You know, just, it, it's really important just to be humble when you're in these groups, but also eventually the community will adopt you as their in-house expert. When they when when you're providing value and people can see that you're always offering value, whoever's running that group will eventually reach out to you. So even within the podiatry business owner group, there's a lot of people in that group that are podiatrists, have their own businesses, but also may have coaching organizations and other things that they do on the side. And I what I yeah, and most of them I watched over a period of time. And those that were always adding value usually ended up on my other podcast. Because I know that when even when they come on the podcast, they're going to add value. They're not going to be there just to spruik what it is that they're doing. So I think if you add value, the community will will adopt you as an in-house expert. And then they will ask you to either contribute more or, like I said, with the personal trainers that I knew, they will say, hey, we've got a running group. We get together on a Tuesday night and we, we have a, yeah, a different speaker come in. Would you be interested in actually speaking? And of course you go, of course I would. Unless you don't like public speaking, then you say, no, <laughs> I'll, I'll write an article for you. Yeah. I, it kind of reminds me actually of how we, you know, we met and I was on your podcast and over time, you know, kind of the trust and relationship between us grow. Obviously we've done a lot of podcasts. We've talked uh, many hours together, but then, you know, you kind of gave me the opportunities like, Hey, go ahead. And you, know, you now have permission to kind of post into our, uh, into the podiatry legends group, even though I'm not. Uh, you know, part of the podiatry legends, you know, group at all. Like I don't, I'm not on your, I don't kind of help facilitate your other podcasts, but you were kind enough to, to trust me and to invite me into your Facebook community. So now I can, you know, spam everybody I want to in that group. But uh, <laughs> uh, now I know you might kick me out. So I might have to uh, pull back on some of the stuff I've been posting here lately. No, but it, it is one of the things when I see people post it, like I love people posting stuff into the group because, and especially if it's, if it's good information. When I see any post in there, I'll, I'll look at it and I'll go, gee, that was really good. Then I'll comment, that was really good. But if I know it's purely just self-promotion, <laughs> they've, they've never commented on anything since they've been in the group for 18 months and then all of a sudden they're now promoting what, something that they're doing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's <laughs> not, that's not going to happen. And the trust level sort of dives at the same time. So in summary of all this, piggybacking yeah, onto other communities is just a great marketing tactic to use. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It's just a little bit of time to find out where these groups are. You can do a lot of them online. You don't have to physically do a run or, or do a walk unless you, you want some exercise. And you don't necessarily have to do public speaking if they invited you. But just being involved in these groups is one of the easiest ways of just slowly getting known in a wider community outside of, you know, of the, the people that already know you. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think it is one of those things where, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? You don't have to always just you know, push out your own content and just have your own channels. Those are great to have because you can, you know, kind of give information to people in the way you want to. But when you can contribute to community and you show that you're involved with other people as well, then they're probably more likely to want to contribute to some of the things that you're doing, right? So if you're being... Yeah. generous and providing value in other communities, those same people that you're building long-term relationships with are going to be much more apt to kind of come over to you and see what you're doing and help you out in the future. So it's a real, 
uh, synergistic or it's a real collaborative way to kind of grow your practice and to get visibility for what you're doing. Yeah, and also don't rule out other allied health professionals or just other health professionals. If there's physiotherapists that have got groups or chiropractors or you know, the, the local GP, local doctors, if they've got a page that is a fairly active page and they've got a group, join it. So, but do the same thing. Just add value where you, where you think you can add value. Eventually they'll see your name. When they see your name enough and they realize you're not trying to spam people, you're just adding value, they will appreciate that. And then you'll probably find you get more referrals from them. Yeah, I definitely agree. Okay, Jim, I think I've covered this subject enough. It was, um, that was good. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Not that I don't enjoy all of them. <laughs> I enjoy all of them, but that was fun. So uh, that, that was good. I look forward to talking to you next week. Sounds great, Tyson. Bye now. Okay, see ya. Bye.